Hi, this is Professor Cummings, and this is your manufacturing process this class. And I'm just gonna, you know, we're starting the whole uh, working from home or online. So I hope everybody in this class is uh, uh, staying safe. Uh, you know, doing your self quarantine or social isolation type thing, whatever you know, you're trying to keep yourself protected and protecting others. So what we're gonna go through today. Is we're going to continue into chapter 25 this is where we had stopped uh, before spring break and i wanted to uh go into this one section of chapter 25 on vibrations you know vibrations is a major issue with machine tools uh it actually causes you your chatter or causes chatter in your workpiece which actually impacts your quality uh the, the your your cutter life your tool life so it's actually got some some major issues with it um and I just thought, you know, it'd be a good idea for us to go through this and understand what's going on in your manufacturing process and, you know, in the particular in the machining process uh, when this is happening. So give you some sort of basic understanding of vibrations as well as, you know, what to do about it. Let's see here. Alrighty, so our objectives for this one is, you know, we're going to go through the basics of vibrations. Just a little bit of the, the idea of what is going on when you're getting vibrations in your machine tool. Um, what influences this has on chatter, you know, a little more specific as to, you know, the chatter itself. Uh, then we're going to go through uh, high speed machining uh, vibrations, a little bit more in the two different types of uh, vibrations. And then how we actually address vibration issues. I think high speed machine is actually going to be the last one. That's actually out of place. So that would be actually going to be the, the last thing we talk about. But, you know, this is going to be the basis of what we're going to go over. So here, you know, in this slide, you know, vibrations, you know, again, it's just a, a major concern in, in machining. All right. So it can affect your your tool life. You know, your tools don't last as long because of vibration. You know, your parts are not as accurate and you end up with a questionable you know, some of the completely unacceptable surface finish. So as an engineer, manufacturing engineer, it's going to be important for you to understand what's going on with vibration, you know, why these things are happening and what is it about your machining setup, your machining circumstances that are causing this to happen and how you can actually address it because it's not actually a, a, you know, something you just have to deal with. You know, there are solutions to, to vibration. And one of the things to keep in mind what vibration results in, you know, one of the things that actually everybody sees when there's like a physical evidence of vibration is chatter, you know, and for our uh, sake, we're going to call chatter, you know, a disturbance in the cutting zone. So that means the vibration has found its way into the cutting zone. And now you're seeing it showing up in the surface finish of your part. So this is what chatter looks like or what chatter can look like. And you see this sort of, uh, disruption in the surface finish. So you got this surface finish that isn't really ideal. You know, some of the things that can influence it, you know, again, is the cutting forces. We've gone through, uh, you know, the merchant circle, all the different cutting forces that are on a machine tool or, you know, on the insert or the cutting tool, the cutting edges. Uh, but it can also be impacted by things like the other machine tools. And we'll go through why that is, you know, so it's the environment that it's in. Uh, different mechanical systems and by that I mean the mechanical systems within the machine tool itself the machine tool that's having the problem versus say a machine tool that's on the outside something that might be just next to it also your cutting parameters the hardness of the material and a lot of people don't know this but it's the type of chip can actually have an impact on it you know that is you know a, a long continuous chip can actually start to impact uh, the vibration that's going on in your in your cutting tool you know, so we'll go through, you know, a little bit more about what goes on when you're actually seeing vibration. But first, I want to go through what vibration is and the different types of vibration. So before we go, you know, get too far. So what, there's a, something called natural frequency. And, you know, all objects have a natural frequency. And all the natural frequency is the frequency at which an object will vibrate. You know, when it's hit, struck, plucked, you know, when you and something is is acting on that object, it will start to have a certain vibration. So think of it like a piano string or a tuning fork or a guitar string. You know, no matter how you you know pluck that guitar string, you know, I mean, granted, you're not abusing it. You know, you're going to get a certain 
type of vibration off of it. That's why the different strings, you know, give you different notes. You know, so that's basically what goes on when you when you're actually plucking or using a musical instrument. You are finding the natural frequency of of an object. Now, one thing that can happen as far as getting that natural re frequency is you can actually excite something to vibrate from the influence of another object, meaning without even touching it. So there's this experiment that a lot of people have probably done when they were in school with tuning forks, where you can actually have two tuning forks sitting next to each other. You know, and of course you've got this apparatus, this, you know, mounted into a box, a hollow box, and one's a solid box. And you hit the tuning fork, which kind of goes with what we said about what the definition of natural frequency is. And this frequency of this tuning fork will cause this tuning fork to excite. And that's meaning that uh, second tuning fork resonates with the first. Now I got that in red because I want you to, you know, hear this word because there is resonation or harmonic resonance that goes on with machine tools. You know, we'll go through a little bit more about what's happening there, but there are different influences within the machine tool as well as outside of the machine tool, physically outside of the machine tool that will have this same effect as the two tuning forks where something will cause the machine or the particular the cutting tool to start to resonate with this natural frequency because the first object was vibrating at the right pitch. So this is resonance is just the excitation of the natural frequency. So it's just something that causes something else to start to vibrate. And again, natural frequencies exist in all structures, you know, particularly in rotary machinery. So that spinning cutting tool has, you know, it's a natural frequency and it can become excited. And that ex excitation can cause your cutting tool to actually start to vibrate. And that's what's going to start causing your chatter, causing you to have damaged uh, surface finish, poor part accuracy and poor tool life. You know, the tool is actually vibrating against the, the work piece. So you can see this, uh, this mill uh, cutter, you know, doing some side milling, peripheral milling. You're generating chips. So if that cutting tool were to actually start to vibrate, you know, if you actually became excited, something actually created a, a, nat you know, a natural frequency or resonation with some other object, you could end up potentially getting the chatter that you're seeing here over on the right. So that's a very important thing to keep in mind as what were the consequences of unchecked vibration in a machine tool. So again, the vibration of one structure can excite the natural frequency of a completely different structure. It's like I said, I keep saying, you know, machine to machine or even some, you know, something within the machine. Now, there are different names for this that we'll get into in a few minutes, but I just want you to keep in mind that the vibration, you know, how this vibration can come about and why it is that you will see vibration at that cutting tool. It's not because that tool, not necessarily because that tool is doing something odd, but it could be because something is exciting that tool from the outside. There's a video that I normally show in class. What I do is I'm going to put this onto Blackboard. It's a, actually a very good video of Tacoma Narrows Bridge. You know, it collapsed like four years after it was uh, open. And, you know, they're saying that the wind matched the natural frequency of the bridge. The bridge started to vibrate, started to sway, and eventually it collapsed. Again, I'll put this on Blackboard, and you can watch this video. I believe it's like about three minutes long, four minutes long. They're going to go through the history of that bridge. But this is something I normally would show in class to kind of give you an idea of what natural frequency and, and those sort of harmonics do. Now, let's talk about the machine tool more specifically and what goes on with that machine tool. In order to do, talk about this, I want you to you know keep one thing in mind. You know, again, keep remembering we've got resonance, natural frequencies, right? Now, you can think about, you know, all the different things that are going on in a machine tool. You can think of this machine as a circuit. Now, this little diagram here, you've got the cutter, your workpiece, your spindle, and, oh, sorry, that's the, uh, it's the grandfather clock, uh, the benefits of working at home. All right, so now we've got this, uh, the, the, the rest of the machine, you know, structure, and you can think of that as one big circuit, you know, that gets closed when this cutting tool engages the workpiece. So once that happens, 
you now have a what I'm going to call closed circuit. Put that in air quotes, closed circuit. And that's where your chatter starts to happen. That's where we actually see the results of all this vibration. So again, so think of that as a completed circuit. And in that circuit, there's all sorts of things that are interacting that can happen that can cause this vibration to take place. And then you know, it can cause the chatter to happen in that particular area. So the natural frequency of that tool will become excited because of several different reasons that we'll go into. You know, either because of things going on within that machine, you know, the pumps, the motors, or something outside the machine, or because of something that is happening in the uh, engagement of the tool and the workpiece. And there's a very specific names for that. And the names of it is you've got, you know, I've got this little chart here of vibrations. And you've got two different types of vibrations. You've got force vibrations. You know, again, these are things that are happening outside of that cutting zone. And then you've got self excited vibrations. So this is things that are happening within the cutting zone. You know, the engagement of the tool to the workpiece or your know, tool to the workpiece. Uh, so we'll go through different, you know, a little bit more in depth into these two different types of vibrations. So like we've got two different types, you know, force vibration, you know, it's caused by, you know, periodic force inside or outside of the machine tool. You know, so either gears, motors, pumps, you know, that are going inside of that machine itself, you know, somewhere inside of that circuit, or it could be a machine next to the machine, you know, to be, a, you know, a two cutting tools next to each other, two uh, machine tools next to each other. Then you've got self excited vibration. And this is just the interaction between the chip removal, you know, with the structure of the machine tool. So that that tool and the workpiece. Now, again, when you don't check it, just to reiterate, you can end up with poor surface finish, you know, loss of accuracy, you know, premature wear, you know, and damage and, of course, noise. You know, so let's go through a little bit more about both of these the, uh, force and self excited and and what you can do about it, because these again, these can be addressed. Again, remember our little example, you know, with the tuning forks, you know, force that was an example of forced vibration. You know, so and there's a reason that this experiment worked and why you're able to do that. So when you're dealing with force vibration, there is a way of stopping this. You know, notice one structure had to be a hollowed tube and the other one had to be a solid block. You know, there also is other things that are going on that can also be addressed. The way to deal with force vibration is to actually disrupt the experiment. You know, if you were doing, there's a possibility of doing the experiment wrong. Now you're just going to do it wrong on purpose. You know, so doing something that either causes this circuit to break, causes this relationship between these two entities to break, and hence you've broken the, the, the ability to resonate, or you do something a little more abrupt and stop and kind of isolate the object, you know, or dampen its vibration ability. So let's look at what's going on again, let's say just in this, what I call the, the circuit, you know, this, the body of the machine, basically everything outside of the cutting zone of this machine tool. Like I said, it can be caused by any of these motors. You know, this was the motor for one of your axes or, you know, a like coolant pump motors or your tool changer or any other other objects would be considered a force vibration. So there's a way of trying to deal with this. And the way to deal with that is through dampening systems. You know, so if you can find some way to isolate, remove the element, you know, the forcing element or, you know, select a different type of material, you know, in the machine tool design or different type of machine configuration, you know, you can actually start to disrupt the ability for the force vibrations and stop that resonation between the two components. And the problem is in, in force vibration, your cutting parameter don't have as much of an influence as you would like. They're, they're really not the way of addressing it. So you really do want to address it through things like isolation pads, you know, or just coming up with ways of isolating these, any particular component by, by different dampening systems. Also, another really good way of doing like outside the machine, you know, one machine to the other is having a dampening system where the machine actually stands, you know, and these sort of isolation pads or these sort of dampening systems will actually help isolate that machine from the influence of other things in your machine shop. So again, the way to deal with force vibration 
is to isolate the forcing element, which is just another way of saying, just break the connection between the machine tool that's affecting the machine tool that you're concerned with. And if it's within the machine, then isolate the components. Now you've got self-excited vibration. Now that is the interaction between the chip, right? The chip and the tool. In other words, you're now in the cutting zone. And this is where your chatter takes place much more directly. So if we just take our little circuit, we're just looking at things within the cutting zone itself. So this is where we have self-excited uh, vibration. And we've talked about this with other examples in past classes, you know, when we talk about how you handle your, your cutting tools. And this is one way of addressing it. Uh, the one example here on the left is a boring bar. You know, in several examples, we talk about how boring bars, because they have a tendency to be long and hang out, they also have a tendency to create chatter. You know, and the way to address that, being able to bore something out, is to follow, you know, some of the machining design guides that we had talked about previously, which is don't have excessive amounts of overhang. And that can go for both milling cutters uh, as well as boring bars and other types of tools. You know, when things hang out, they tend to have a far more likely likelihood to vibrate. Uh, another thing is different types of tools can have be designed so that they don't have as, or they have sort of an internal dampening system. So it's possible to have hev heavily dense uh, boring bars so that they don't uh, start to vibrate. Another thing that goes on, it's kind of a subgroup of self-excited vibration is called regenerative, regenerative chatter. Now regenerative chatter is basically when you cut a material and you don't get a good surface finish then you take another light cut and you create more chatter because you're not actually engaging the material hard enough or deep with enough depth of cut so that's just a subgroup of self-excitation vibration self-excited vibration so the way to address it well again one of the, the first ways people know to address it is through cutting parameters you know, this is a matter of your speeds and feeds and your depth of cut. You know, that, you know, again, that'll ad address things like regenerator, regenerative chatter, as well as, uh, you know, you're cutting too fast, too slow, as, as and then as well as different types of harmonics that you might start to create within the machine tool. Another one is, you know, tool holder adjustment. Then again, things like adjusting your boring bar or looking at things like different types of, you know, how deep, as well as how long of a cutting tool you can address or have in, in your engagement. Now there's another type of concept that comes up, you know, and this is called, you know, high speed machining. And again, we've got to consider the fact that this cutting tool is indeed a circuit and there's a lot of things influencing it. So what you can do is we can come up with a way of looking at what the natural harmonics or the different you know, the natural for frequencies of the machine tool. Now they don't look exactly like you would think if you were to graph these uh, the machine tools uh, natural harmonics. Now you can have something called an impulse hammer, and you take the machine tool setup where you actually have the cutting tool that you are going to have in this circuit, as well as the overall machine tool that you're going to use, and you use the impulse hammer to see what type of vibrations you get just from that tool in that particular setup. And what can come out of this is it will generate a graph for you. And this is what's known as stability lobes. You know, again, this depends on the type of material, the type of cutting tool, as well as the machine and the use of an impulse hammer. And the beauty of this concept is what this tells you. you know, when you start looking at these stability lobes, is it tells you where those natural frequencies are the greatest. You know exactly what you can do when you're cutting these machines, what parameters you can take to actually either cause more of a problem or reduce the vibration of the machine so things are not becoming uh, self-excited. So again, I want you to notice this graph. Here you've got a depth of cut and over here you have a spindle speed. Right. And that's going to be important because we're going to have a couple of very simple calculations. But I want you to listen, understand that we're looking at spindle speed and depth of cut as they relate to 
different types of stability within the machine tool, you know, and you can think the red is where you're actually touching into the natural frequency of, of the system. So this is when you, it's known as high speed machining. So high speed machining, just to give a brief definition, uses an impulse hammer to map the natural frequency of the machine tool and finds the stability lobes. You know, and these are areas where the tool is not being excited. So here's a little bit bigger graph or a bigger image of the stability lobes. And again, keep in mind, this is your spindle rotation speed, you know, uppercase N. And this is your axial cutting depth, you know, you're plunging in the in the Z axis. And anything between these lobes is actually considered a stable cut. And anything within these lobes, as part of these lobes, is where you're getting potential chatter. So there's implications to this. So, so think about this. You've got spindle speed and you have depth of cut. So what that tells you is there are times when you can actually increase your actual spindle speed, something you couldn't do before. And when you're talking about a milling cutter, you're talking about a milling cutter, you know, in high speed machining, you know, if you want to calculate, you know, your cutting velocity or what we call your feed rate, you know, it is your feed, you know, uh, rev uh, millimeters per revolution or inches per revolution times your spindle speed revolutions per minute times your number of teeth. So this is how fast you can actually travel, you know, your feed rate through your material. So that higher spin speed allows you for a higher feed rate. Also, you've got a higher depth of cut. So you can cut far more aggressively than you could if you were just dealing in this nice little safe zone. So this is why high speed machining actually can be such a, a fast process and still give you good quality parts. So high speed machine allows you for an increased depth of cut. As you can see, an increased depth of cut. So you're going up the y-axis further because you're stable within this zone. And also an increased feed rate, again, based around you know this calculation here. So your higher spindle speed. So it allows you to cut much faster, much deeper. And when you think about that higher speed and higher depth of cut, you get a higher material removal rate. You know, you're influencing your feed rate as well as your depth of cut using the same cutter. So this is one of the benefits, another addressing of vibrations in your machine tool. So what have we gotten through this particular lecture? You know, vibration is a natural phenomenon in mechanical, you know, in mechanical operations. You know, and all systems have a natural frequency and are prone to resonating with other influences. You know, vibration, you know, it causes chatter, you know, which is just a disturbance in the in the cutting zone. And you've got two different types of, of vibration. You know, one is forced vibration, you know, which is outside of the cutting zone. So we've got a forcing element, be it a pump, be it a, a motor, being another machine. You got self excited vibration, which is just influenced from within the cutting zone. So your tool to the metal. And you also have uh, regenerative vibration or regenerative chatter. You know, and forced vibration, the way to address that is through isolation or dampening to systems. Self-excited vibration, you address it through cutting parameters. And then you got high speed machining. You know, it allows you an increased material removal rate, you know, by understanding the natural harmonics of the machine tool. So again, so this is Professor Cummings. So I'm just going to close off here. This is about 23, 24 minutes uh, uh, lecture. And I will create another lecture for you you know, soon so that you can move on to the, you know, later into the chapter or in this section of machining. All right. Thanks a lot.